Hello everybody. Upon massive request, I backlogged a bit the other game's benchmark videos and today I'm focusing on getting the best thermals and performance for this laptop by squeezing the extra customization via throttle stop and its comprehensive control center. Not only that, but finally I'll show you this baby can also overclock the DRAM memory and I am rocking the 2933 MHz parameters I got from another guy and using those for my Corsair 2666 MHz sticks. Remember that 2933 is the maximum allowed for Intel 10 Gen Core and despite it seems less than normal 3200 Gen 3 laptops comes from, it actually offers a lot better latencies with the same DRAM sticks. We'll see at the proper part of this video. Now. Back to the beginning, throttle stop. You know most of the 10 gen laptops do not allow you to undervolt your PC, right? That's because they say to avoid possible hack from a threat called plunderbolt. There are very few vendors offering this feature, yet so important for laptops with the reduced thermal dissipation. For example, MSI allows to unlock them via a cheat code in the BIOS. Tongfunk, that is this Yonigo or Max 17, does allow straight undervolt, not even requiring you to cheat anything. You run your throttle stop, set desired parameters, and you are set. Let's see how. First, you download throttle stop and install it. It's not even requires a real installation, it writes an ini file in its folder, and that's it. These are my preferred options to set it up first. I set it to stay minimized upon launch, as I'll tell you later how to auto-run it with administrative privileges, which it does require, upon login with your user. Then I say not to quit but minimize if I click on X and, already this so, to minimize if I click on the upper right box with the CPU information on the main screen. Also, as at first it's not selected either, I tell throttle stop my discrete GPU is NVIDIA, so it can also monitor its temperatures, etc. A very useful thing, as if the values are blank, it means you are running with iGPU, a thing you desire when not gaming. It's a fast and good way to see nothing is calling your NVIDIA unnecessarily. Anything else is left as it is. Next is to work with the undervolting. Intel has a voltage table for its processors, which means at any given load, Intel assign a given voltage to keep the processor running reliably without lockup. In fact, the more the voltage, the more the processor can boost its frequency in GHz reliably. But the more the voltage, the more the heat and power draw. It's the drawback of any overclock. We are doing the opposite of overclock here. I mean, we are going to specify a fixed offset, a delta, that in any moment will be subtracted to this table. So let's imagine at 3 GHz Intel sets 1.2 volt voltage, okay? At 3.5 Intel sets 1.3, at 4 Intel sets 1.4 and so on. With our undervolting offset of let's say 100 millivolts, we are saying the processor that no, at 3 GHz it will receive no more 1.2 but 1.1 volt. And as the offset is fixed, at 3.5 it will handle 1.2 and at 4 GHz 1.3, etc. What are the odds of this? The less the voltage, the higher the chance your Intel CPU isn't capable of reaching those GHz reliably. That is, it locks up and boots rid of that. So undervolt mostly depends on your precise CPU that you have on hands and you have to experiment to find the best balance of undervolting while providing 100% reliability. There is no other disadvantages at applying undervolting. Your CPU runs cooler as it generates less heat, so less temperatures means it can boost higher in GHz, no thermal limits nor power limits reached as wattage is proportional to voltage by current and we reduce the voltage of our CPU under any scenarios. The better build your CPU is, the most undervolt you can hope to achieve. My 10875H currently is running at minus 
110 millivolts, more than the screen shows, and has never experienced a single BSOD. I will push it more eventually, but remember, 10875H is one of the best CPUs among the Intel lineup, as they are selected to achieve up to 5.1 GHz. Not every CPU is made equal. Probably a 10750H can't handle so little voltage, and you won't reach minus 80 millivolts, but maybe you can. You just try. So, in throttle stop, you undervolve two things, the CPU core and the CPU cache. You first select CPU core, then go to the offset voltage and slide down a bit. From my experience, most of the processor should handle minus 75, you can start from there. Then, as I explained, since this offset is given at any different voltage of the table for any frequency, you need to stress your CPU to see if it stays operational even under high frequency. So I suggest you to apply, see if it's responsive, then not to select save in the ini file immediately, but just going back into main page and launch TS Bench. That is a simple stress test you can set for different CPU loads, single core, four cores, eight cores, and for a given duration. You run some of those and see. If the machine does not lock up, you are safe to increase the undervolt, like 5 millivolts more, 80, rinse and repeat. You can also try immediately 100, but you might test a bit further and not only with TS Bench then. In that case, you can keep TS open and launch some benchmarks, games, etc. If nothing arises, you can set the OK save voltages immediately and you are set. Those values will be modified only when TS actually launches. If it's not, your CPU defaults to the Intel table, so no worry to break the laptop. Once you are confident enough, we'll set together the auto-launch options via Windows Task Scheduler. Until then, you run the undervolt at your fingertip for maximum safety. About the power limits, since the control center does allow PL customization for different power profiles, 15 in totals, 3 fast switchable by the pressure of a button, you really don't need a massive customization in throttle stop. But I found it like a required component for the control center power limits to actually work as intended. So I discovered that any settings you choose in the control center for temporary PL2 and sustained PL1 power limits, no matter what, they can't exceed PL settings set in throttle stop. So, best practice is to write PL1 equal to PL2 equal to 120 watts in throttle stop, and then let the control center do the fine tuning based on any power profile you choose there. Note that during battery operation, profiles don't actually work. There is a forced battery profile operation for the laptop. Speaking of operation at the wall, Mind you that currently the control center might be a big buggy, and upon resuming, I've experienced it might not follow what a power profile you set. Instead, some are the coded power limits for the machine, as if the control center wasn't loaded. This means a good practice might be, upon resuming, cycle between power profiles, like office, gaming, etc., just to ensure the control center does apply the updated power limits. Throttle stop is very useful, however, to check max power limits reached and see if the control center is working as intended, as we have seen in my past TS Bench section. With the CLR button, you clear any statistics so you get fresh max values, etc. As you see in this TS Bench session, I'm running via battery, and in that case, any CC settings is overridden with hardware values that seems to be 25 PL2 and 15 wattage PL1 sustained. I used this laptop under battery for a day in smart working to test it, and by using TS Bench, Bandicam, Microsoft Outlook, Word, Excel, Microsoft Teams, Citrix receivers with several remote sections of IT systems and remote Microsoft access, Chrome, Edge Chromium, some YouTube videos during poses, it lasted 7 hours until done, 
or to be more precise, at 6 plus hours mark, it said battery left was 12% with 55 minutes remaining, but I had to reconnect for recharging it before the BIOS update I discussed in my past video. So pretty good performance for a gaming laptop like this, 91 mAh capacity is good enough. Back on topic of power profiles, here you see how to rename each of those 15 custom profiles. It should be pretty straightforward, but better safe than sorry. In the control center, do note that the undervolt settings in this piece of software are actually fake and don't do anything. Please stick with throttle stop for those things as it's extremely more reliable for that. Control center works instead well to lower the throttling temperature, they call the TCC here. It reflects immediately with the proch hot you see in the throttle stop main page. It works. Control center works very well also for the NVIDIA GPU power limits. If unticked, the TGP is 115 watts. If ticked, you can slide to the standard for the RTX 3070 series card that is 125 watts. Of course, for other Tongfang chassis there might be minor differences, but the substance remains. Also, dynamic boost can be set here. If you want it, and how much more wattage you want to push your GPU should the CPU being underutilized, that is with 45 wattage or less on the processor. I generally keep both those sliders to the max, as in gaming this is king. Fun tuning is a bit hard to explain, but keep in mind this commands the inertia of fine spinning based on temperature. If you don't like your fan spinning 0, then 20, then 10, then 20%, with this slider you can force them to fluctuate less. They won't control the temperature as fast as in the vault, but you won't notice abrupt fluctuation of their RPM. I keep it unticked at the moment, however. Finally, there is a tick for memory overclocking. This is done via BIOS, and you just select here in one profile and reboot, press F2 to enter the BIOS and set whatever you want in the advanced page memory overclocking uh, settings. I'll show you later in the video. Save and those new DRAM settings will be kept. Once you make the BIOS change, it stays there until reverted back in BIOS. So be careful, as you might need a, a CMOS reset in case of overextending and locking up the boot. Note that in office mode there are some additional sliders for the NVIDIA Whisper mode 2.0. You can set a frame limiter ranging 30 FPS to hundreds to reduce fan noise. It's as like as setting the NVIDIA frame limiter in the NVIDIA control panel. Here works only if you select office mode though. During battery this is locked up to 30 FPS no matter what though. I am not a gaming under battery but might be crucial for you and I don't know if working in the NVIDIA control panel you can overcome this limitation. Fun tuning is customizable for every one of those 15 profiles. I found benefit touching just the office mode profile, lowering the noise during operation, and let instead auto fans do their job for gaming high workloads. Now let's see how Throttle Stop can be run each time you log in with administrative rights and we know UAC request, minimized and working. Putting in your normal startup folder isn't enough. Windows will require you every time to elevate you as administrator. So we use Windows Task Scheduler. You create a new task, name it as you wish, tick to run it with administrative privileges, and then proceed to set which conditions must trigger this. I set as a precise user login. You can set any user of your laptop if you use more than one. I just did this, so in case of a very harsh problem with throttle stop settings, I can enter with another account and not have throttle stop run and locking my machine again. You can also ask to run when the PC starts, that is even before anybody logs in. This might be useful if you leave it as a server of something, with all the remote connections. But again, I avoid this for extra precautions. Only once logged in, I am fine to apply under bolt. 
Then we select which program we have to launch, that is Throttle Stop. You find it in the folder where you installed it, of course. And then some extra options, like if I want to run even if working on battery, I don't want it to be closed in any case, etc. Once done, you can test if task works by running it with the green arrow. And then you can log off and see if works automatically at your login. If you select it to start minimized, as I advised previously in the throttle stop options, it will run smoothly in background and you can find it in the tray bar. Finally, remember the overclock memory options in the BIOS. As I flag in a profile and reboot it, let's see what it offers. It has a default profile, which is gained by the Duran memory itself, as per GDEC specs, and one custom profile. Since parameters are so many, I didn't fiddle with them until I got in my hands the same parameters, but for a Corsair 2933MHz DIMM. Here are the 2666 default values, note the memory ratio at 100, and here are the 2933MHz values, see the ratio now at 11. I simply input every parameter of the 2933 into my custom profile, saved and tested with memtest86, and in normal workloads, gaming, etc. So far, this laptop rocks. To see if memory is clocking as intended, you just run Hardware Info 64 and check the RAM parameters. I don't know if there is any benefit from going 2666 MHz speed with CAS latency of 18 versus 2933 speed CAS latency of 19. I should test with IDA benchmark, but too lazy so far. In any case, with Intel laptops, memory speed incurring no more than 1-2 FPS difference. It's not a big deal as it is for Ryzen, but your mileage may vary. Plus, notice I'm running 2933 at 19Ks, as previously said, versus the 3200 DRAM sticks with canonical 22Ks latency that you find in Ryzen laptops. So, 19 versus 22 is a very noticeable latency difference. I hope you found interesting this deep dive into undervolting, the Tongfang control center power profiling, task scheduling and memory overclocking. And thanks for watching.